Hi, I'm Steve Carlson, and today I'd like to begin this education video with a short prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is a kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. That's the way we do it in our church. And I'm sure in your church, you do something very similar. And all of us in this nation came from a country that is here because it is a blessing of the Christian God. And, and we worshiped God in many different ways. I personally come from the covenant background. And I was fortunate to be able to get a scholarship to a private school, which was really one of the finest schools in the entire state of Minnesota, Minnehaha Academy. I went there on a music scholarship, never sang, but I played music and played sports and got to study with some of the best teachers in Minnesota. Made all the difference in the world. And it is my hope that every child in the United States can have this opportunity to pursue their learning with the support of their parents, their church, their community, and that the government will not get in their way. We cannot allow the government to continue to get in God's way. And if we have to take on the courts, well, so be it. That was very important for us, and that's why we pursued the science and mathematics training of Sputnik. Now, everybody can't do that. And we were fortunate that not only did we have Americans, but we had contacts in Europe who were willing to come and work with us to oppose Hitler, to save this planet from destruction. I don't think really... It, I really don't think that most of the students today can understand that. You almost had to kind of live through it, this idea of the greatest generation. Hey, this isn't some phrase that belongs to Tom Brokaw, of all people. All of us should respect that greatest generation in the same way that we should respect the generation that gave us our independence and gave us our liberty. In the same way that we should respect that generation that brought us through the great civil war, that terrible destructive war, which many of us believe was an atonement for our sin of, of being involved in slavery. Slavery didn't start here. And most slaves in history have not been African-American. In fact, many were indentured Englishmen at the beginning of this country. But we sure turned it into something that those who used the slaves were all slaves to money, slaves to tobacco. And now we're having another payback as many abuse tobacco and are dying of lung cancer and then many other kinds of cancer that we're having to grapple with. So at the beginning, if, if you look in the Constitution, there was nothing about providing education. There was something about science and technology, that patents would be extended by that federal government because they already knew the great power of innovation in science 
and how it could touch our lives for the better. And that's what we're trying to do. We're not trying to say everybody can be a general. Everybody can be president of the United States. Everybody can be a great rocket scientist or a great biologist or a great doctor. We're different. Each of us are different. What education is there to do is not to level us, to make us all the same, to bring us to our lowest common denominator. It's not to get back at each other, to go back through history and hate. It is to give us the light of hope, of knowledge, and alone it cannot do it. And that is why we want our religious liberties. Now, I am not a preacher. I am not a holy man. I'm not trying to sit here and cross the line of the church and the state. There's not a line, a bright line separating it, no matter what they say. Thomas Jefferson didn't say so. James Madison didn't say so. George Washington said that without the Christian God, the Christian religion, we would never have defeated the British military, the most formidable in the world, even after they had spent years fighting with Napoleon, who you've heard of. And so we were blessed. We were blessed to stop out and become a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. My grandmother Mary at 101 years old could still recite the full Gettysburg Address by Abraham Lincoln. Born in 1909, there was still a memory of this great, great conflict in this great nation and the dream of what it would become. And we've expanded. We've become something even more than what we knew, and yet even less. Because today, there are many who want to use education to deprive people of knowledge, to brainwash them, to put things into their mind that are not American, that are not based on our foundation. And when we start to fight God using the schools, and for some of you who have as strong a faith as I do, if you want to respect God in your way, this country allows you to do it. Because at the beginning, we had 13 different colonies, and each one had a different religion. In fact, each one was chartered on the basis of a religious community that could escape from England where they were suffering persecution and there were terrible religious wars like we're witnessing today. And they could found a new colony, which would become part of a new state, which would become part of that new nation conceived in liberty. And that liberty covers your belief in God. It does not cover your ability as an atheist, okay, or as a hater of God or a hater of the faithful does not cover your right to persecute them. And we see persecution here today. Now, I went to Minnehaha Academy. I was blessed to get a scholarship there. I didn't sing, but I got a music scholarship. I got a sports scholarship, and I got an academic scholarship. And I love to study science. I love to study history. And I used to look for good. I used to look for God's hand. I did not look for putting my community over all the communities in the world. That's not our religion. Is it yours? No, our religion is to reach out to others and to create a community of freedom and liberty and respect, just like we found it here in the United States. So I wanted to talk about that. Uh, many people around the Twin Cities and actually around Minnesota know of me because I've been politically active at the university uh, working for cultural pluralism, for civil rights, but also for real knowledge in a successful world-class university. And so my background in political leadership besides being a political science major, is really in university governance. A member of the University Senate, the College of Liberal Arts Assembly, 
into MPERG. I was a local board chair. I was on a state board of the Minnesota Public Interest Research Group. I was with the Student Senate. I was uh, vice president of the Board of Publications of the Minnesota Daily. Um, I was the vice president of the International Students Association. And really, I learned, but I also worked. I want education to succeed in Minnesota. And so with a colleague of mine, uh, we authored the first cultural pluralism requirement. You couldn't graduate from the University of Minnesota's College of Liberal Arts unless you completed two quarters in what we called ethnic studies or women's studies. You got Chicano studies, African American studies, American Indian studies, and we put in Asian studies because there wasn't an Asian American studies department at the time. And we allied with the women's studies department and we pushed it through. Uh, I can't say it was a success. As a matter of fact, we need the professors to go back to that and to find out the true knowledge, the true history of the American Indians, of the Chicanos and the Hispanics here in Minnesota, as well as, of course, we should be covering, we've already got the Scandinavian Studies Department. We've got a lot of knowledge and we should put that together so we're not just uh, trying to brainwash kids in the high schools or the uh, elementary schools. Obviously, there are a lot of issues. These issues have not been hashed out the level of the professors. Okay, so what is, what is our status after we look back at the Civil War? How can we all get along? You know, and we're trying to work this out through politics, and we're also trying to work it out through K-12 education. And what we need to do is to pursue what I helped to start at the University of Minnesota, and which really, uh, although the requirement was there, they did not put any money into those departments. The Chicano studies and the American Indian studies were right down by the water closet. There were like about four or five people. You gotta be kidding me. What kind of commitment to cultural pluralism is that? And it's not. And there was a university president who said he was all excited about it. There's nothing to be excited about. But I'm not an ideologue. I was fortunate that I found a place to learn a lot outside of the classroom in the University of Minnesota in my 12 years there. I've also spent a couple of years now uh, as a, an auditor, a senior auditor at, that means we audit, we're seniors who audit at the University of St. Thomas. It's just a wonderful experience. I think it's a great school. There's so much to learn, so much education. And we cannot look at this as based on money. Now, personally, and I made this known publicly, my education was tragically cut short. Tragically because we won. We went ahead and prevailed at the Department of Health, Education and Welfare in a civil rights uh, dispute with the whole state of Minnesota. But when you win, you lose. They submitted uh, false uh, claims for payment saying that I wasn't there anymore. I was there talking to them every day. But they said I wasn't there anymore and they cut off my education. And I went on into extension and that was good. And of course I had the, the benefit of all these student leadership positions. And I actually started a, a jazz workshop. And after that, because I've been a linguist in the uh, Air Force during the Vietnam War, I was a Vietnamese linguist. And so I started a language learning co-curricular program. And today I'm still involved in educational things. And I worked for seven years as a managing editor at the Asian American Press. Wonderful educational opportunity. And I've been really blessed. And I'm really frustrated by the failure of our educational system today. I want it to work. Now, what we need to do is get to the Arizona, it's called a school tuition organization organization. This was upheld by the United States Supreme Court in 2010. And one of the things I support the Obama administration for having done is to support that program in the Supreme Court. Yes, we see the opportunity. Now we have public uh, teacher school unions or public teacher ed educational unions that they think that this is a job for them. It's not a job for them. This is education. This is America's quest. We are here to get knowledge. Now, a lot of you out there are not getting it, but it's there. And when you go to school, you need to go to a school that teaches you to learn. You learn to learn, and this is serious stuff. 
If you learn to learn, you don't have to ever stop learning. Now look at me, I'm 63 years old. I'm still learning. I'm excited about learning because I learn all the time. Right now I'm learning how to make videos. I'm learning how to campaign for the Senate. Uh, I got into all this social media because in 2010, I was so motivated, I wanted to run for Congress to get out there and to do something to restore health care, to keep it in our hands. Today, I want to keep education in our hands. This Common Core is nothing more than another takeover. It's a federal takeover, just like they took over the health care and they're running it into the ground. There can be some improvement. But let me tell you, these public schools are not the educational uh, treasure of our country. When we allow you through Brown versus Board of Education to have access to these schools, this is no great gift. You don't just go in there and just do everything the teacher says and try to get the best score. No, you have to believe that there's such a thing as truth. There's such a thing as knowledge. Now, if you have knowledge of lies or knowledge of little tricks to do on people, what kind of knowledge is that? I mean. Where does that put you? Where are you in the universe? You're not there to trick people. You're there to have all the opportunities that God made you to have. Or if you wish, all the opportunities that the United States of America was intended for you to have, okay? You're an American at least. You don't have to believe in what I believe, that I'm created by God, that you're created by God, and that you have a mind and a destiny and you have the right to enter into relationships with other people that are meaningful, that are real, and that courageously, it's not easy, you fight against the trouble that you will see. All of us see that. It's not just one race. It's certainly not just one gender. It's the human condition. That's what you should learn in college. They shouldn't be there brainwashing you and pointing fingers at each other. Neither should they be brainwashing and pointing fingers in Washington, in the Congress, or in the White House. Now, we need to get the White House out of education. We need to get Congress out of education. If they want to help, this is great. But right now, they're destroying our educational system. When I went to school, I was fortunate because I got a scholarship when I went to Minnehaha. But let's look at somebody who didn't get a scholarship. Let's look at people in the Catholic schools, if they still exist. I, I think some still do, but they're under great pressure. It's like the United States uh, Supreme Court and all these people, they just started firing at these people. They say, no, we can't give you a bus to ride in at taxpayer expense. Well, did they say this to the blacks in the South? Uh, you know, once they had Brown versus Board of Education, no, they didn't say that. As a matter of fact, the whole thing became busing. But Catholics couldn't have buses or it violated the Constitution. Catholics couldn't have textbooks. I mean, it's just crazy. It's bigotry in education. And that's because it's a political thing. We don't want it to be a political thing. We want real education. Let's go back to what it's originally about. You get your three R's, reading, writing, and arithmetic, so you can function. And then you may go on. But if you go on, you're serious. You're not trying to get a job because you saw one of those guys and you thought they made a lot of money, so now I want that job. Oh, and by the way, I want that guy out of that job because I want that job. He's taken my money, you see. It's my entitlement, my right to have his money. Well, it's not. That's utter foolishness. And this country is under assault by a lot of utter foolishness. And education is the way forward out of the utter foolishness. So let's get back on track. When I talk about taking our country back, taking our education back. We don't want the federal government to create a curriculum. Uh, Bill Gates does all this kind of stuff all the time. I like Bill Gates things. I mean, I love computers, okay? I mean, I like computers before there ever was a Bill Gates, all right? Computers are amazing. And Bill Gates should be trying to contribute. But Bill Gates should not be helping people like Hillary Clinton, Bill Clinton, to get into education and force uh, a, a low level of a pablum a knowledge down people's throats while keeping them from using this fantastic resource of online computers or just the books and the libraries that we have, just the knowledgeable people that we still have here. Now I hear some people say, oh, we need the old guys, the 
old white men, they're the problem. You know, when the old white men die off, they actually say this, then the world will be full of knowledge and will move forward. That's ridiculous. These are people who have been abused who say things like that. People who are bitter, okay? We cannot be based on bitterness. We want to be based on truth and knowledge. And through history, people have found that in God. People of all religions, the Jews, have found this in God. They have a memory of God. The Christians have found this in God. The Muslims have found this in God. They have a time when they were able to become caretakers of great knowledge of the West and a great civilization of the West as the Roman Empire, uh, who so many love, destroyed, destroyed the temple, destroyed the Jews, okay? And they're still trying to collect. And Christians barely survived that time. And God brought them through and God established a far, far greater basis of civilization than these barbaric Romans. Okay, that was old time. Now we have modernity. We are moving forward. We need to move forward together, but we cannot be overrunning and burning books like Alexander did when he burnt down the library in Alexandria named after him and he burnt all the library and all the books it's ridiculous and don't do it don't become barbarians okay let's go back let's have teachers real teachers who are serious about bringing people who want to learn into the schools if people just want to work there's also a tremendous way of acquiring not only the specific knowledge but background knowledge and skills and a love for learning there's no reason that you need to be in a college uh, to have a love for learning. You can learn all the time today. We all know that. Now, I want to comment on a few things real quickly on a few items that I've talked with some people about of education just on this primary campaign video to show you where I'm coming from. I've already said that we need real education with real religious liberty. And that we shouldn't be persecuting the Catholic Church and shutting down their schools. We're driving them bankrupt because we have lawyers, I would say corrupt lawyers, I would say corrupt politicians, who are un unleashing the statutes of limitations just so that they can attack the church. I mean, this is, this is like the Dark Ages. You know, we just talked about the Dark Ages. This is the Dark Ages where we have these out-of-control politicians that are attacking truth, attacking people's right to seek the truth and to live in the truth. What's wrong with these people is what I, I'm led to say. So you know where I stand on religious liberty. I've talked to you about the bases of real education, what we were trying to do as a nation, and what we tried to do when we built education up after World War II, before it got out of control, to be brainwashing by people who don't like the baby boom, who don't like uh, having children, who don't like the country, period. You know. This is not what education is for. Those are the things you can talk with your parents about, and we can have avenues to discuss that in the school, but you can't just tear the schools down and stop the real learning because a bunch of politically motivated teachers and, and students and community people want to stop learning. What is going on here? I mean, Malcolm Moose talked about this during the Vietnam War. I've been reading about that. And Malcolm Moose was concerned. He was correct. There was learning that was supposed to be going on there. And I don't think really it's been going on at the University of Minnesota, except in a few limited areas, ever since that Vietnam War. It's chaos. So that's where I stand on that. I believe in intellectual freedom, academic freedom, but I also think we need leaders. We don't need a president that's just trying to make money over at the University of Minnesota. We need someone who's a real teacher who believes in education. We don't need teachers running all around trying to get research, try to get published, and have no idea what education is. We don't need students who are not seriously there to learn. I've been in the University of St. Thomas, as I said, and it's a wonderful environment. I deliberately went to the University of Minnesota. I could have gone to the finest schools in the country because of my grades and my entrance scores, although I was short of cash, obviously. But in those days, they had scholarships available based on merit, and I could have had one of those. I decided to go to the university because precisely these problems which our country was facing at the time, the Vietnam War. We had racial conflict in the South. 
Um, people were talking about civil rights again. To me, the real civil rights movement was the Revolutionary War against Britain to establish the freedom of the colonies and the right to uh, live with their personal rights protected against the government, against any government. They were looking at the British and what the British did to them, but they started to map out a way where they could live uh, with diversity and with liberty. The problem of slavery was not solved. And, and there's a lot of other questions that I'm sure a lot of people want to look at. I mean, we can look to the expansion to the West. We can look to the continuing um, taking of land after a series of uh, conflicts with Indians. And we expanded all the way to the West. And people thought that was our manifest destiny. And then came the Civil Wars. And, and after that, We've tried to find a way forward, but we haven't done a very good job. We militarily occupied the South. That's what Reconstruction was, where Northerners, bankers took over the South with military occupation and put the blacks in charge of the whites. Sort of what we see today in Washington. Okay, well, that's not the way forward either. We've got to talk, we've got to make the government work but this is about education. We've got to make education work. And we can do that, just wonderful tools. But in order to succeed in becoming educated, you need to align yourself. You need to see, who am I? I'm an American. No, I'm not black. I'm not brown. I'm not Indian. I'm an American. And there are Americans who are black and brown and Indian, just like there are Americans who are Europeans. But first and foremost, you're an American. Learn what that is. Learn what that represents and what your destiny is and what you can make it. This is education. Education means to lead you out, to lead that black American man out, to lead that family, to lead that community, to lead that football team, but also to lead something that's not a football team and to work and have that respect. And people need to kind of be helpful because things can't work unless people take roles and are helpful. And so this is all part of education. And then you need to start to see what knowledge is there? What human knowledge is there? Why? Why do I want to know human knowledge? Because I want to take it forward, because I want to apply it. I don't want to be walking around in a world of problems when there's solutions all around, but I got my head in the clouds. I'm not saying I believe in God, but I have my head in the clouds because I'm just in a fantasy world. Maybe I'm listening to some music or I'm thinking of something I saw on TV. No, you have to bear down and you need to move yourself forward, solve problems. And then we can work in organizations. We can move forward. We have capital. We can invest and we can be competitive in the world. You have to find out how all this works. And that takes real, real work because people aren't because basically people aren't going to tell you. So education is to do that and then avail yourself of those resources. But remember, knowledge is based on what is actually true and what is actually possible to be invented. And you don't stop as soon as you got some money in your pocket. You have to carry the thing forward. How is this great enterprise called America going to work? And in order to do that, that's why you need to participate in education. And you need to take your duties seriously. Now, I'm not saying I'm perfect. But I've always tried, and I will always try, to take all my responsibilities serious. Because those are there for me. That's who I'm intended to be. If I have a family, this is important to me. I can't be drawn off by some bar, or some uh, movie, or some guys, you know. I gotta build that family. Barack Obama is right on that. But if I'm a woman, I can't be out there trying to fight my man all the time, try to fight all the other men so that I can get it. I can get in there and get it. No, we all have to fall in line, work together. And I, in my earlier movie, I talked about how after World War II and the Depression, the kinds of organization which had been learned in that war were able to be applied so that there could be a healing of this country through creating. And that's what I want to do through education. Now, somebody asked me about uh, 
Globe University. Somebody said they got negative ROI. The return on investment for going to Globe University, they said, was below zero. And they said only 25 to 30 percent of the people graduate. They said, don't go around defending Globe University. Well, I hadn't made any statements on Globe University at that time. I'll make one now. I'm familiar with these for-profit schools. I am not on the side of public school teachers and government officials who attack everybody who tries to use the private market to give people opportunities for learning. On the other hand, obviously, school is wildly inefficient right now. Imagine what we could do with these computers and why don't we do it? Well, how do you make money doing that? How does anybody make money with these computers? Every information industry has gone down. They're flailing. Newspapers, government, you know, uh, book publishing, music publishing, movie publishing, all these enterprises of the mind are in serious trouble economically. Well, we still need to use the private market, not only in totally for-profit schools, but in uh, all educational enterprises. Now, I have to comment, sure, we have in our state, Minnesota state uh, constitution, it says that we're going to provide a public schools for all anybody in the state, basically. Now, does this say everybody needs to go to a public school? It does not say that. It should not say that. Does this say that you may not spend any money on private schools? Doesn't say that. It, it also doesn't say that if you do pay for your children to go to a, a private school, that you also have to pay the taxes so everybody else can go to school too. You know, it doesn't say that in the Constitution. That is what politicians have worked out. We should not see school choice in private schools as some kind of cop-out, as some kind of antisocial behavior or racist behavior or Jim Crow or anything. That isn't what it is. Look back to what they're doing in Arizona. People of all races are allowed to apply for a scholarship to go to a private school. These are low-income kids. They're pretty much targeted at low income. And I guess that's people who don't have the means otherwise to get out of those public schools and go to a private school. Now, originally, a lot of them were, I believe, Catholic schools in Arizona. But by the time that case got to the United States Supreme Court, for whatever reason, the largest uh, school tuition organization funded secular schools. And any school that could get accredited by Arizona could apply or could be the beneficiary of these tax credits. These tax credits, people who wanted to support this could get a tax credit. And Part of their money, instead of going into the state treasury, would go to uh, fund a school tuition organization. I think this is great. It has passed constitutional muster. Now, I talk to people at the legislature all the time. Do you think this is something we should do here in Minnesota like they do in Arizona? Oh, sure. Oh, sure. But nothing. They, they don't have the capability, the capacity to do it. I think in the Senate that we can... Uh, look at this and we can make sure that we protect people's religious liberty. So what I think we can do, I think we can use this Religious Freedom Restoration Act and we can allow people to be able to pursue education for their children just like uh, they want to according to their conscience and their religion. And then other people can pursue their education according to their conscience and their religion. And in that mix, you'll have the public schools which are provided by the state. But that doesn't mean the state is going to use this little mandate for public school education to beat the entire people over the head and say, hey, you're all going to line up, get in the class, fall in, now here's what you believe, here's what you believe, give up all of your identity and, and, and all of your beliefs and, and your constitutional rights of conscience. This is not in that constitution. What we have are politicians that are abusing it. And so as far as Globe University, uh, I believe that uh, there is a benefit, obviously, to going to Globe University. A lot of people think, well, I'm going to change my life. There's federal financial aid or there's some kind of financial aid package. And so I'm just going to throw myself into just being a student. I'm not sure if Globe works well that way or not. I do know there's continuing education. 
I know if you go to the university, you can go to the University of Minnesota. Which university? There's all kinds of universities. Go to the University of Minnesota, you can take night classes. I think it's great to take night classes. Is GLOBE a kind of night classes? I sh I'm sure they should have night classes. But uh, as far as people should be very careful about what they purchase. And I'm sure that there are some people who in this current time have gone to GLOBE and have been dissatisfied uh, with what they were able to learn there for the cost and how it was uh, able to benefit them. But I'll say this, I don't know how you measure the return on investment of education. Do you? I mean, what is the return on investment of knowledge? What is the return on investment of truth? It seems to me that these are things which cannot be valued. If you are really acquiring knowledge, then you're lucky. Because I'm sure there's some people that went to Globe University because their parents told them to, or they had to make a choice, they had to get out of the house, they had to make some quick decisions, and they took that, that uh, road. Did they know what knowledge was? Did they truly value knowledge? Is this what they're trying to do? And so you first need to learn to value the knowledge and the truth and opportunity. All of these are ephemeral things. They're things that are like, they're not tangible and yet they're very real. And so we need to learn what those are and go after those. And if you wanna go after those at Globe University, you should do so smartly, I believe. You should do so smartly, I believe. Uh, you transfer your credits like they say on TV. And, and, but don't, but don't jump all the way in the pool. Just test it with your feet and see what you can get out of it. If it's not the right one, if there's other opportunities, maybe you can you know, step out of school. You know, if there's 30% graduating, I hope that some of those people are people who wisely stepped out of school, used the skills that they did have, but that they'll still be welcome back when they want to go back and learn more. Now, I haven't talked to the administration. I certainly have not received any money from private schools. Um, I haven't received any money from anybody. I'm taking the money out of politics. But I hope we can talk. I hope that we can all pay attention to education all the time, not just in this video. Let's work on that. I devoted years of my life because I honestly think that education, I, I came back from a war where I was fortunate to become a linguist. I worked in the defense intelligence, uh, just trying to help people uh, monitor uh, what was going on so that we could end that war in a better way. And I came back thinking, who doesn't hate war? I hate war, okay? I don't know anybody who likes war. If you like war, you're crazy. Okay, I'll tell you that right now. But I came back saying, you know, I've seen a lot. I've learned a lot. I have to do a lot because because this war that I've seen, these conflicts in the streets, the things we're seeing now, the direction that this country is taking, no, I don't want that. So I'm going to see where can I work in the university because I thought, you know, I thought I'm bad, you know? I mean, I can go in there and do this. I mean, you know, bad in a good way. And I thought, well, I can, I can go in there and I can work for these things and I can have an impact and I can participate in government and sure enough, I did, had a great impact. And I'll tell you, it's not beanbags. It's not beanbags now. I'll tell you more about that later. But we all need to commit ourselves to be the next greatest generation, okay? If there is such a thing, how can you be the next greatest, okay? But we want to be the greatest generation for now. And we can learn from the greatest generation. We can learn from every generation of Americans. And we can bring together what makes America great. Immigration, yes. But we want people to bring America up. We do not want people to bring America down. And there can be some kinds of immigration which are bringing America down. What America needs to do is to reach out a helping hand to these other countries and to bring them up. And that's what we stand for. That's our exceptionalism. Obama doesn't believe it. I believe it. I know it. I know it in my heart. And so I hope that today you'll go forward and you will pursue that American exceptionalism yourself, that you will do it through education, that you will do it through teaching, that you will do it through lifelong learning, and not just in the mind, but in action. And not just for money, but for America. The dream of America, what America is, the great blessing and prosperity that's been bestowed on us. Let's get it back. Let's build it up. And 
let's spread it like you would spread the gospel. I'm Steve Carlson. I approve this message and thank you for listening.